is the Elegoo Mars a good choice for printing miniatures? Now, I don't want to waste your time. I know a lot of people will pull you along and wait till the end of the 15, 20 minute video to tell you the answer. And so let's just jump to the chase and then you can decide if you want to actually watch the rest of this video. And the answer is yes. It turns out the Elegoo Mars is a great printer for you to print miniatures at home. A few months ago, Elegoo contacted us and they wanted to send us a printer to review and that is the Mars 4. And I said, sure. Go ahead and send it, we'll take a look at it and we'll see what we think. At the time I had been working with a lot of different resin printers and so I wanted to see how theirs matched up. I didn't realize, because uh, at, at, at that time what the Mars printer was and when it got it and it was just this tiny little thing, my immediate thought was, oh shoot, I thought they meant their bigger one, which is called the Saturn. First gripe, first off Elegoo, Saturn is like a thousand times bigger than Mars Whereas your Saturns are only like twice the size of your Marses. So I think that's some false advertising right off the bat. If you're gonna name them by the planets, they should be appropriately scaled. All kidding aside though, I'm not a big fan of doing reviews right out of the box because how can you really know if a printer's any good? I've gone through enough FDM and resin printers to know that first impressions can be deceiving. I can still remember when I first opened up my Ender 3 after having dealt with a bunch of other printers that just were giving me so many pains and I put it together and I started printing and it was wonderful and I thought I had finally found the printer and within a month it started giving me tons of problems. I had since bought several more of them and they gave me problems as well and now I can say with surety that I don't want to get an Ender 3 again and instead of get the Bamboo Labs. On the resin side, gone through a similar thing with a lot of different printers that each had the potential to be good and then some of them ended up being better than others. The other thing I don't like about reviews is that um, your first impressions can sometimes be bad when the printer actually turns out to be good and it was just user error. And so when I've looked around to find out what the best printer is to buy for printing miniatures, it's been a tough journey especially because we want to do it at scale with our print farm. So as we went along and started using this more and eventually expanded our resin print farm from just like four printers to now 30 or 40 printers, whatever it happens to be, we decided that Elegoo was the way to go and they are the one that make Mars. And I kept putting off doing the review on the Mars printer because I just wasn't feeling right about doing a review without all the proper information, especially because we were about to try out their Saturns. We bought a bunch of their Saturn III Ultras and then also bought a bunch of their Saturn IV Ultras. Now, the main difference between these two printers is the size. There are some other things as well, not issues, but actual feature differences. And I'll talk about that in this video as well. But is the Elegoo Mars a good choice for printing miniatures. Now, I don't want to waste your time. I know a lot of people will pull you along and wait till the end of the 15, 20 minute video to tell you the answer. And so let's just jump to the chase and then you can decide if you want to actually watch the rest of this video. And the answer is yes. It turns out the Elegoo Mars is a great printer for you to print miniatures at home. And I'll tell you why. And then I'll also tell you why we prefer the Saturn for the most part. But for you at home, if you want to just finish this video and you want to take my word for it, who has tons of printers printing for thousands of hours at mass and at large scale so that we can print as many miniatures and sell them as quickly as we can to everybody who wants them, then I can say for sure that the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra is our favorite printer. And I would recommend the Elegoo Mars V Ultra for your at home use. So there you go, that's the answer. You can turn off the video right here. When I go and check the analytics afterwards, I'm gonna see at this point, bam, everybody stopped watching. Most likely you kind of wanna have more details than just that. So let me give you some of them. So Elegoo actually has a lot of different printers. They have their Mars 4, Mars 4 Ultra, Mars 5, Mars 5 Ultra. They have their Saturn 3, Saturn 3 Ultra, Saturn 4, Saturn 4 Ultra, and I think there's a Saturn 5 coming out. They've got their Jupiters, which are just even bigger, and their Jupiter Ultras. There's a lot. So even if it's like, I like Elegoo, there would still be the question, but which of these printers should I get? Should I get the latest one? Just spend the extra money for the Ultras, not the Ultras. 
That is what I want to go over here. So first off, I'll give you a quick answer again. You always want to get the ultra over the not the ultra. And you might think, well, there can't be an always because the not ultras are cheaper. But when it comes to resin 3D printing, the printer is not really your biggest expense. So some people always talk about price of the printer. And while price of the printer is important, your biggest expense in the long run is going to be the resin and also your time. It's like buying a regular printer. The printer itself is usually not a big deal if it's $100 or $200 or $300 because you're going to spend so much more on ink. Well, resin is the same thing, especially if you're buying good resin and not just the cheapest stuff that's going to give you problems. And when it comes to printing miniatures, you don't want to buy the cheap stuff. You want ABS-like resin. Our favorite is Amerilabs TGM7, which is definitely not cheap, but it gives, in my opinion, some of the best results out there. So the nice thing about the Elugu printers is they all share some of the same things in common. First off, they have really good pixel density. Now, everybody always talks about resolution, 4K, 8K, 12K. But if you know anything about TVs, then you know that the resolution of the TV is not always the answer to whether it's a good TV. Because if you have a ultra high um, resolution on your TV, but you're watching it from a million miles away, that's not going to matter. Which is why when it comes to the resolution of your computer monitor, or in this case of your 3D printer, you have to couple it with the size of the build plate. So 4K just tells you how many pixels it's going to have. And so 4K on a large build plate is not as good as 4K on a small build plate. So really what you want to know is pixel density. In other words, the size of the pixels. And in the end, we're at a point now where the pixel density of printers doesn't matter a heck of a whole lot. Some people are going to disagree with me, but we print a lot of miniatures here. And when it comes down to it, the resin you choose has a larger impact on the quality of your miniature than the resolution of the printer itself. It's kind of like audio bit rates. Once you get to a certain amount, your ear is not gonna be able to hear any better. Or the number of colors on a monitor. There's a reason we stopped talking about the number of bits a monitor has back when I was a kid. Because once you hit 24 bit or 32 bit, your eye can't see anything better than that anyways. So resolution is, as much as everybody's gonna brag about 4K, 8K, 12K on their printers, is not as big a deal. Really what you're looking for in a resin printer is does it print and have minimal failures and does it have some quality of life things that make you able to just print and less have to take care of the printer. Those are the things you're really looking for. I think we're past now the era of 3D printers where in order to get into 3D printing, you also have to be a 3D printer technician. We want to get past that. Bamboo Labs has already done it for FTM, and a lot of companies are doing it well for resin printers as well. Now, our experience of printing a lot of stuff shows us that the Elegoos are really good at this. They have a few things in their technology too, if you get the ultras. The biggest one is bed tilting. Now, the way this works is typically when a resin printer is printing, then it will move up and down, It'll print the layer, it'll move up, because what it has to do is it has to disconnect from the FEP, the, 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 the um, material that everything is printing on. It pulls up and then goes back down. And that can often cause issues, especially if there's a lot of things connecting all at the same time. There can be a lot of suction problems. And so instead, what this one does is the bed itself tilts down, which releases it bit by bit rather than all at once. We have found that this has drastically decreased the amount of print failures that you have. It also drastically decreases not print failures, but also things that aren't a failure, but don't look great, or stretches your miniature a little bit here and there, thus increasing the quality of the print. And it also severely speeds up the print. We're finding that the Saturn IV Ultras, which have the bed tilting, versus the Saturn III Ultras, which did not, print at least twice as fast. And for a print farm, that's really important. But heck, even for you at home, it's important. I think speed is important for 3D printing no matter what, because you don't want to have to print something and then wait eight hours for it to finish. You want it to be done much quicker so you can print more stuff, so you can have more stuff to paint and to play with. So speed is important, even though it's not as important maybe to you at home as it is to a print farm where speed equals how much money we can make. 
So the, the bed tilting is such a big difference. And thankfully the Mars 5 Ultra has that. And so it is definitely what you wanna be comparing between. Price wise, the Mars is about half the price of the Saturn. It is in US dollars, $270 versus the $400 of the Saturn 4 Ultra. So Mars 5 Ultra, $270, Saturn 4 Ultra is $400. And that is a big difference in price when you're looking to buy at home. But like I said before, usually you're gonna spend a lot more in resin. The thing is the Mars for the most part is more than big enough. Even though it's technically half the size of the Saturn when it comes to the area of the build plate, for the most part, when you're printing miniatures, you don't need anything bigger than that. Even larger miniatures typically come chopped up from the people who create the STLs. You'll only run into the issue of getting the Mars over the Saturn if you're really looking to print incredibly large miniatures. In which case, yeah, if you know you're gonna do that, or if you're doing cosplay parts, for example, or props that you need them printed in one big piece, you're gonna want something bigger like the Saturn. I can't really speak to whether the Jupiter's worth it because we haven't used them, and I'm not gonna try to talk about a printer that we do not have experience with. I, I just want to stick to what I have data on. The other thing that the Mars 5 Ultra and the Saturn 4 Ultra have, which I think are phenomenal features, is auto bed leveling. Uh, bed leveling when it comes to resin printing is incredibly important and it's easy to get wrong. It's not hard to do like with FDM printers and yet it can still be the source of frustration for getting it just right. If your bed isn't leveled or if it isn't leveled at the right height, you'll have all sorts of print failures or at least a lot of part of the prints that won't work out just right. So the fact that this does this automatically is great. Now it does come with a bit of a con and that is the way that it does it is it has all these extra springs and, and spaces above the bed itself and resin can tend to get in there and it's harder to clean. But I think it more than makes up for it in its other features such as its ability to detect roughly how much resin is in the vat and tell you if it's overfilled or if it's going to run out before the project is actually done. Now that comes with a caveat too, because apparently where they put their max fill line is too high. And when you fill it up to their max fill line, it'll tell you that it's too full. So just, you know, fill it up slightly below that and that solves that problem. So let's finish this video by answering the question that I've already answered, but now that you have more information, you can understand more of why I say it. The first question is, are the Elegoo printers any good? And the answer is absolutely, astoundingly yes. I have gone through lots of resin printers, many of which did a decent job, but these ones do a good job. They do it quickly. They have all these extra features that make your life a lot easier. They come built in with Wi-Fi. They, the Mars is nice and compact. It fits nicely uh, wherever it is that you want to keep it in your home. Although do make sure that you follow the safety procedures to make sure you're safe to print with resin at home because that can be dangerous. And with the tilt release, it just decreases the number of failures by a large margin, which is a very big deal when it comes to printing with miniatures, because it fails all the time if you don't get your supports just right. Now the question is, is it the Mars or the Saturn? And that is really your personal preference. I would say for a print farm, the Saturn is 100% gonna be better than the Mars. Although I will say that it's been very handy having the Mars, because what we find is sometimes we'll be printing, and even though the Saturns are great, it doesn't mean that they're 100% foolproof. Sometimes things will fail. And it's really annoying when you're printing 20 miniatures on a plate and one fails, and you're like, ah, now I've got to run the Saturn again just for this one miniature, and you're wasting a lot of time. Now we have the Mars to print that one miniature when it fails. Or if we just want to test something out, or if we just need one or two miniatures for some side project, we have the Mars sitting right there. So it's been very useful for that. Kind of like the A1 Mini from Bamboo Labs. It's been very handy having that there for prototyping and just to, because we can have it next to us and get stuff done really quickly with it when we don't need the larger printers. So at home, you'll probably find out that the Mars is worth it. The Mars 5 Ultra at $270, which is almost half the price of the $500 given the current prices that we see on their website right now, of course, those can change. I would say that that is a significant enough difference that I would recommend the Mars over the Saturn for your home use. With the exception of if you know you're gonna be printing bigger things on a semi-regular basis or at all, 
then you'll want to get the Saturn to make sure you have the print volume necessary for that. Or if you know that you want to print a lot at home, then the Saturn will mean that you don't have to print as many times because you can have just one thing print and you can print more at the same amount of time. So if you know you're going to be printing large volumes, go for the Saturn. But for most people who are just printing at home casually for their own armies, either entire armies for games like one page rules, or just to print a few proxy miniatures, or to print for Dungeons and Dragons or whatever it is that you're using it for, the Mars is definitely the best solution for that. Either way, I'll put links below to those. And a big thank you, of course, to Elegoo for supplying us with that Mars printer, which we still use to this day. And many months later can definitely say that we're happy with their product. And as we build our print farm, Elegoo is going to be the first place we're going to look as we expand to even more printers. That's everything. Happy 3D printing.